wire carrying an electric current will have a magnetic field around it. Looking along the wire in the direction of the current, that magnetic field will be circular and clockwise. If there are more wires each carrying that current, for example a coil, then the magnetic field is much stronger, and it is of course all the way along the wire. In this setup here I have rather untidily arranged a coil of wire through which I can pass a large current. On each side of the wire I'll place two strong magnets. These are ceramic magnets with poles on each face. First making sure that we have two opposite poles facing. We'll stick the magnets onto a U-shaped metal bracket and then slide the metal bracket around the wire. So that when the current flows the arrangement will look like this with the two magnetic fields interacting. To explain more completely how the magnetic fields interact we look at the diagram from one side. We see the ends of the wire with the current flowing away from us. The magnetic field around the wire is therefore clockwise and circular. The magnetic field between the permanent magnets runs from north to south. These two magnetic fields interact. Above the wire the two fields run in opposite directions and therefore tend to cancel out. Below the wire they run in the same direction and therefore reinforce one another. The wire is pushed away from the strong field towards the weak one, in this case upwards. At the same time the magnets are pushed in the opposite direction, downwards. To measure this downwards force I'm going to use an electric balance, which I'll slide underneath the magnets. As you can see here the magnets are close on each side of the coil of wire. I'm going to use this arrangement to measure the strength of the magnetic field, that is the magnetic flux density between the two permanent magnets. In order to do this I'll measure the current through the coil, count the number of wires in the coil and I'll measure the force on the magnets which is equal and opposite to the force on the wire. Flicking the switch on we can see that the current through the coil is about 5 amps and that the force on the magnets is the equivalent of about 20 grams mass. Before we take the final measurements, let's consider how we're going to do this calculation. The force on the wires and on the coil is proportional to the current through the wire. The greater the current, the stronger the magnetic field. It is also proportional to the length of the wire in the magnetic field, that is, the length shown. We've measured that, and that is 49 millimeters. Another major factor is the number of wires in the coil. If you look here very carefully, you can see that there are six. And the final factor is the strength of the permanent magnet, the flux density. The total of the force is equal to N, the number of wires in the coil, B, the flux density, I, the current, and L, the length of the wire within the magnetic field. With a better view of the meters, we'll take another pair of readings. The initial current as we switch on is just over 4.9 amps. This value drifts down with time, most likely because the wires in the coil and in the transformer source are getting hot. The downward force on the magnets is equivalent to a mass of 20 grams. Before we substitute all these values into the equation, we'll rearrange it so that the flux density is the subject of the equation. The quantities N, I and L therefore transfer from the top on the right hand side to the bottom on the left hand side. The force must be measured in newtons. To convert the 20 gram mass equivalent to newtons we have to multiply by 9.81 the gravitational field strength. As you can see this gives us 0.196 newtons. The other figures we noted earlier except that is for the value of the current which we have taken as 4.9 amps. That is the highest value recorded rounded to two significant figures. Substituting these numbers into our rearranged equation will give us the value of B, the magnetic flux density. That calculates to 1.36, the units being Tesla. Thank you for watching.